Yeah. Uh, what, are there any other ideas that interest you at the moment? Oh, yeah. Um, so I got to be honest, man. I mean, this is not even a SaaS idea. I'm just going to throw it out. You know, you, do you know the website examine.com? My favorite website out there. Yep. I, I would put it in top 10. I'm a paying, awesome. I'm a paying member. There's a new one that I'm looking at called uh, Consumer. It's like examine.com, but for uh, brands, for vitamin okay. brands. Yep. Anyway, and so, yeah, I love Examine it. is nutrition information you can trust. So I interviewed the founder uh, on my... I love Sol. Saul's he's great. I interviewed him on the podcast. Sherry, my wife's been friends with him for several years since I met at an event. So had him on the show and I was fascinated by it because I'm like, it's nutrition information you can trust, right? And, and you know that, but I'm saying it for the audience. Where is the examine.com for crypto and NFT, like for web three stuff? Because I feel like there's so much crazy info out there Agreed. and there's so many opinions and religious, you know, not truly religious, but like religious fervor and the, and the Bitcoin maximalist and shit. And it's like, Someone can do this, right? That biz, in the business. So let's talk about that. Examine. I've talked about Examine on the pod a ton because I think it's one of those sites that I see. I don't think I know how big they are. I mean, like I would imagine like not big, like two or three million a year in revenue, but I have no idea. That's just a guess. But I know it's not big because they don't hire a ton of people. And I was like, this is one of the most under monetized sites I've, I know well. I actually think that their examine could be significantly uh, examine could be a hundred million dollar a year business. I think. How, so, how, how do you think? So there's a bunch of, so I would, I, I think that they, for one, they don't do any affiliates. So something like wire cutter, you know, wire cutter. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, so in, um, in New York times, you know, they're a publicly traded company. They're the wire cutter revenue got classified now as uh, like other revenue. So I've been trying to like decipher it and figure it out. And they do something like close to nine figures in sales from affiliate affiliates. Examine doesn't want to do that, but right. I think they I think they could. I think they could do it in a tasteful way, and it could work wonderfully because what Examine doesn't do is they don't tell you which brands to buy. But I think they should because that's what I want, and that's what a lot of people want. Additionally, I think you could sell to doctors. So there's actually another company out there that does like four or five hundred million dollars a year in sales, and they sell to doctors. And when you go to the doctor and you have like a rash, they just like it's like Wikipedia for doctors. They like look it up. And like the latest uh, studies are there on that. Interesting. And examine, you know, I didn't talk to Saul about that, but they don't want to do it because they don't, do they not want it to taint the, yeah. they don't want to become a review site. I mean, that's why we don't trust review sites, right? Is the, but the I top trust 10, some, that. I trust Wirecutter. Yeah. I mean, I think there, there I think there's this way to solve for that. Like, mm -hmm. like, do, like if Casey Neistat is a YouTuber who I like, if he tells me a cool product and then there's an affiliate link there, I don't care that it's an affiliate link. Right. But anyway, what, what uh, exam? I also think examine.com could work for injuries. Oh, like medical, like, hey, my knee, because like, to get the definitive, yeah, this is that, or si just illnesses in general, right? You Google symptoms and, and like it, rehab. It, yeah. Did, did, are you talk. sick or injured enough to make that a thing that you would pay a monthly <laughs> subscription for? Not me. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know if you could make money through subscriptions with that, but I do think that like, when you have like an Achilles injury and you're like, I'm desperate, I'll do anything. I just need to learn. Like, because I remember when I was researching for my, like I had a pain in my leg. I was like, I like, I went to all the studies and I just read all the studies. I'm like, I'm just going to figure this out. I'm not going to read like a e how article on how to do this. I'm just going to go to source and like, what's the, what's the thing that I'm reading about the studies. But how does, uh, Rob, do you know, how does examine.com operate? Like, how does that literally work? Cause all they do is they like pour through all the studies and find the ones that have a good sample size that have definitive proof. And they make a list of like, these work for sure. And then they have another list that says, these seem like they might be able to work, but we can't say for certain. And then these are shit. Don't trust. Pretty much. Yep. And they, their big hit early on, he said all this on the podcast, it was, it was all SEO, right? It was organic. And then they took a Google dive at some point. I don't know when it was, but um, they had already implemented their subscription revenue. I don't even think that they had ads at one point. I don't know that they do anymore. I'm actually on the site looking around. But yeah, that's it. That's how they write the topic. And their, what is their value? It's the brand. It's the trust. You know what I mean? That's why everyone goes to it because they have built that brand that you you trusted and I trusted. But but how do they do that though? Do they literally just have one? Hey, go. Uh, all right, editorial team. This week. You, Steve, your writer, your writing topic is um, um, building muscles. So go and research everything that helps you. Go research creatine, protein. The 
So if I were them, I would be looking, they've been around for a decade now. All the topics have been covered. I'm only looking for new information, right? I'd be monitoring all the journals, all the whatevers and have subscriptions to all that. I don't know exactly how they do it, but that, that would be it, right? It's having, having a Google alerts essentially for all the new medical stuff to just update. You just want to keep it updated. That's crazy. I can't I, imagine there's a, to a new topic they haven't already covered in their thousands of pages. And this would actually make way more money in crypto. <laughs> totally. I mean, there's several, there's several niches where this, this would be interesting. The hardest part is there's a bunch of crypto news sites. And I, when I go to them, I just don't know. I don't trust them. Yeah. Right? You like, don't just, know. Like, are these guys like these like hardcore libertarian, the world's going to yep. end fuck money, like fuck uh, cash because it's just stupid. Right. Or it, are that, you know, like it, a, a great way to explain it is like, basically, do you remember like the Mac versus PC ads where mm -hmm. there was like a, like a, cool looking Mac guy versus a nerdy PC guy. And do you remember that animosity created between Mac and PC guys? Yeah. Now, imagine if each person who owned a Mac or a PC had a million dollars of Apple stock. That's like, that's like the, the, the yes. hate, that's like the vibe that you're going to get. That's right. And, and it's so, religious fervor with money behind it. Now. And so it's very hard for me to hear a crypto guy, even Sean, Sean's one of my best friends and he, but I know he's got a lot of crypto. So I'm like, but is this because you, are you telling me you th what you want to happen or what you think will happen? Right. So I it's agree. actually really interesting. How, what would you do to build that? I would start. So first thing you have to do is build credibility. You have to start there. So I'd probably start a podcast so that people could hear my thinking week to week. Um, I would definitely be attending all of the crypto events anywhere to get into the network to build trust. Because if people don't, if you're anonymous, like if you try to build this anonymously, no one's, no one's going to believe it. So I would get in, into the network and then um, follow the model. I would look at what did examine do. We know anyone who has done this model, what did they do in terms of of uh, content? And then obviously just hire writers and look at the white papers and give our opinions. And this is actually a cool business because this business could last 100 years. So like if you look at like um, Consumer Reports, Consumer Reports has been around, around mm. for decade, decades. They still do well into the nine figures of, of revenue. So Consumer Reports is a you know review site that people pay money for. They're a nonprofit. So all of their expenses are public. All their revenue is public and everything. And they're still growing. And so like if you do a good job of building a brand like on this topic and you start reviewing stuff and you do a good job, you can review many other things and last for a very long time. It's kind of a cool company. Yeah. Yeah, they are still kicking. Anything else interests you? 